What happens when the biggest names in 3D printing, manufacturing, and innovation all converge in one city? You get Rapid TCT 2025, where the future of making things isn't just imagined, it's printed layer by layer. I had the amazing opportunity to attend the show this year, and I wanted to put together a quick summary of what I saw, and based on that, what we can expect this year in the 3D printing space. My top pick of the show might surprise you, so keep watching. Now first, if you're not aware, Rapid TCT is North America's largest additive manufacturing show, and it's more than just a consumer desktop 3D printing show. There were actually more companies there in attendance showing off their industrial solutions as well as innovations for aerospace and defense. However, if you're watching this video, you're likely interested in the consumer grade technologies. So I'm mainly going to focus on that and we'll start there. First up, anchoring the front corner of the show floor was Creality with their very impressive booth lit up in green lights. And they had just about every recent machine on display, including the very large K2 Plus and a bunch of Creality high printers. Interestingly, they seem to be related to a new company named PioCreate, which appears to produce more industrial end machines. And the two biggest things that I was most interested in at their booth was the K2 and K2 Pro printers, which are set to be the successors of the K1C and K1 Max. They'll have all the new technology of the K2 Plus, such as the closed loop motors and the larger Pro model appears to have a heated build chamber. They're all very nice looking machines and I think we can expect those to drop in the mid to late summer. I'm personally going to look into these for my print farm. Right now, I'm working on a video for the K2 Plus, so if I like that machine, I can see myself investing in a bunch of its little brothers. Now they were also showing off their new dry box solution with independent chambers, so you can keep materials at different temperatures, as well as their 3D scanning solutions. And I thought the scanners were pretty impressive. They are certainly getting way better as time goes on. With their cheaper Otter scanner, they scanned my whole body in less than a minute, and it didn't require any special lighting conditions. The Raptor series is geared towards reverse engineering and more mechanical parts. And this section of the booth was manned by a very passionate maker named Yuri, who put together this very clever scanning turntable. I spoke to him and we're certainly going to collaborate on something together in the future because I can see myself getting a Creality Raptor and his turntable solution made it so easy to work with. Moving on, Elegoo was strategically positioned right between Creality and Bamboo Lab on the show floor and they had their Orange Storm Giga making very big things and of course their Centauri Carbons making parts as well. I really want to get my hands on either the base model Centauri or the Carbon if I can, but after speaking with them, the demand right now is so high that all of the promo units are not going out anymore and I'll likely have to order one and wait in line. The price is really attractive, so I think I'll put my order in soon. And surprisingly, they didn't have any multi-material or multi-color systems on display, as this was definitely the theme of the show for desktop printers. However, Elegoo is well known for their resin printers and they did have the new and very large Jupiter model on display. For those of you who are into resin printing, you'll be looking at a build volume of roughly 300 by 160 by 300, which is really big. And right beside Elegoo, Bamboo Lab was out in full force with a nice display of their latest and greatest H2D performing various feats such as printing and laser cutting. I finally got to see them in person, very impressive machines to say the least, and cool to watch the dual extruder in action. It's another one that I'd love to get my hands on naturally, as if you watch this channel, you'll know that I do both a lot of 3D printing and laser work. Bamboo Lab was also showing off their new Cyberbrick product that is launching on Kickstarter. They had an interactive demo and it seems like a fun way to get started with 3D printing, electronics, programming, and robotics kind of like their version of Lego Mindstorms, but with 3D printing involved. Thought it was very clever. Flashforge also had a booth towards the back of the show and they were showing off their new AD5X and Guider 4 series, both with multicolor capabilities. Again, this was very much the theme of the show. And their Guider 4 Pro looks to be targeting a more prosumer and industrial light clientele, more interestingly though, I learned that they are involved with an enormous 3D printing farm in China that has over 3,000 printers running and that they are going to have a very affordable full-color Mimaki competitor being released soon. 
My understanding is that it will still be quite expensive, but nowhere near the second mortgage that you would need for a Mimaki. Prusa was also in attendance and they had everything from their XL and Core 1 on display. The multi-tool head solution will probably be the future of multicolor printing as it has the advantages of speed and less waste and that's hard to beat. But I've heard so many mixed things about the execution of this on the XL that I'd probably want to spend more time with this printer as it is expensive and it'd be a very big investment. The print quality looked pretty good though and the ability to mix filaments like printing in TPU with PLA supports was very attractive. And they also had their Pro HT90 on display which is super fast and can print at temperatures up to 500 degrees. Definitely a prosumer model as you're looking at dropping around 10K for this thing. I also managed to catch a glimpse of Joseph Prusa himself who was in attendance, but I declined to snap any pictures or video as I hate feeling like the paparazzi. Uh, and moving on, FL Sun was also there with their T1 and S1 series Delta printers. I haven't owned an FL Sun machine nor a Delta printer yet. They were eager to show me these units as these things are even bigger in person than they look on camera. And the speed was definitely impressive and I was skeptical about the print quality and part strength at those speeds, but surprisingly, they both seem pretty good. They had some parts printed in their ultra high flow PLA that I tried to break and I was surprised at how strong they were. In addition to machine manufacturers, there was also many big players in the material market, such as eSun, Polymaker, Sunlu, and many more. I didn't really notice anything groundbreaking in terms of filament, but with all of the multi-material and multicolor printers on the rise, you could tell there is a big focus on color choice. Polymaker with their Pan Chroma lineup has so much to offer and Isan also had some new colors in their matte finish. So you may wanna check up on new filament options on the market. Suddenly also has a new offshoot brand, Inslogic, which appears to be a higher end grade material with a bunch of engineering grade options. They recently sent me some of their new TPU that I need to try to print with. So I'll probably have that in a video very soon. Upgrades and accessories were a plenty at the show. Everything from nozzles and hot ends to motors and more. LDO had their box turtle filament change system on display. And they also had auto eject showing off their automated build plate swapping system. I'm not sure how those two companies are related, but I thought it was pretty cool. It looked promising with some further refinement. In the sea of aftermarket parts is where I think I found the hidden gem of this whole convention. Bontech was there and prior to the show, I had seen some mention of their new index system, but honestly, I kind of just figured it was another generic tool changing system, but in person, I think they really nailed it. It's so compact that they had it running on a tiny little Voron Zero, and this was so impressive to fit a tool changer on there but at the same time, unfortunately, I think this is where they may not have gotten enough attention. It was so small that it may have gone unnoticed amongst the big and flashy marketing displays. I really think they should have tried to hype it up more with a front and center focus at their booth. The concept of the index is that instead of swapping the entire extruder modules, they have a really nice way of just swapping the hot ends. I sat there for a while and watched this system perform many color changes without any issue and without any waste. And this system could be easily adopted to custom builds. And because it's so compact, you can fit so many modules side by side. You can get a lot of colors and materials in a very small space. I was told they're trying to work with bigger manufacturers to maybe sell or license the tech. I think whoever jumps on board with them is going to do very well. Beyond that, there were also some other very notable, interesting things at the show, and one of them was the presence of X-Tool. They had their laser engravers on display, and I've worked with them extensively in the past with those machines. I have a ton of X-Tool videos on my channel. I really love their laser equipment, and they have amazing software to run it all. Lately, they've been expanding into apparel printing and even laser welding equipment, so it seems like they're expanding their product lineup into different spaces. I've kept asking myself when they are finally going to break into the 3D printing market 
and their choice to be present at an additive manufacturing show is hopefully foreshadowing into a 3D printing future. I asked them at the show and they declined to comment or confirm anything, but if they do have something in the future, I hope they will reach out so I can give it a try. Another thing I'd like to eventually experiment with is a filament recycling system. As far as I could tell, Philobot was the only one there that was showing off this kind of equipment, which I thought was surprising. Maybe I missed out on anyone else at the show doing it, but considering how much waste people are producing with multicolor prints right now, I would have thought there would have been more options out there. So Philobot, if you see this, please give me a shout. I would love to try one of your systems. Recently, I've also been getting some emails to try out some resin machines from a company I had never really heard much about called Hay Gears, and they had some amazing resin prints on display and a line of clear resins that supposedly do not yellow. Post-processing is still required to get them crystal clear, but the results seem to be worth it if you need something like that. Uh, beyond that, there were also a lot of higher-end machines that blur the lines between prosumer and industrial. I don't know how or where to draw the line on what is what, but Form Labs had a big booth with their new and very large Form L plus the Fuse One system, which are just incredibly impressive machines. Perhaps one day I can get this channel big enough that they'll send me one or that I can just save up for something like this. And Big Rep also had some very large FDM machines churning out massive parts, among other brands doing similar things with their large format machines. Uh, EOS had a beautiful display with their high-tech offerings and they were showing off their original airless basketball that they made for Wilson. I had no idea that this is where that trend started and that it was them who started it. They let me take it out of the display case and it did bounce really well. Pantheon was also in attendance and they had their very industrial looking machines making parts. Their new HS Pro is super impressive and they've always seemed to focus on carbon reinforced materials. The quality is amazing with their ball screw motion system. There's also something oddly beautiful about the aesthetic of their machines with the clear panels up top and the whole drive system exposed. They were showing off this little mini bike that they had printed on their printers and it was getting a lot of attention. On the industrial side of things, I think the popular trend was bigger machines and definitely metal printing, especially for aerospace and defense. I can see the future of additive uh, is in metals. There were so many cool innovations in that space with 3D printing tungsten, even ceramics for space and satellite applications. So much is happening at this level that it's hard to keep track of unless you're directly involved. However, coming from the much simpler and smaller desktop 3D printing environment, you can't help but be amazed. And finally, I capped the show off with the Creality 11th anniversary event. Creality is actually the reason I was able to attend the show in the first place. They partially sponsored my trip to the event and I'm very grateful for that. Otherwise, it would have been a stretch to afford it. And they've been very supportive of my channel with sending me printers for review and not once have they ever asked for any editorial control or have tried to negotiate a favorable review. And it was the same deal with the show. They just said that they'd like me to be there and that was that. They didn't have any requirements for exclusive coverage of their products and I was free to roam around and do whatever I want and report on everything while I was there. So a big thank you goes to them for the invite and their support. At the 11th anniversary event, I made a small appearance in their pre-presentation show and they had a panel of inspirational speakers and makers sharing their work and passion projects. They also had their new product announcements that I have already sort of covered at the beginning of this video with the K2 series lineup and their new space dry dry box system. Apparently, they will also have some new pro level filaments available and have been hard at work on the software side of things with Creality Print and an exclusive new infill pattern inside of Crowley Print offering a significant strength improvement over existing infill options. So that pretty much wraps up the event. I'm gonna put some links in the video description down below where you can find some of the more interesting things I saw at the show. Feel free to ask any questions in the comments section or provide suggestions to what you would like me to cover in the future. It could be machines from the show, materials, specific projects or experiments, or future events that you'd like to see me attend. As my channel continues to grow, your engagement makes it possible for me to justify the cost of going to these things. And I really hope that one day I can attend something like this show, but in Europe or Asia. So let's make that happen. 
Be sure to subscribe and also check out my website, embracemaking.com for upgrades, accessories, tools, and more. Thanks for watching.